Welcome to BFC in Shorts. This conversation is with Harry Randell, who has been working in the USA. He's here to tell us about Denver, Pittsburgh, and Indianapolis. Enjoy. Harry, thank you for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. So really, really good for you to come on. Now, you're going to tell us about three places that you've worked in the U.S., where are those locations? Uh, yeah, so we're going to start back a couple of years ago um, with Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and then across to Denver, Colorado, and then finally to Indiana, Indianapolis. So how long have you been in each of those places? Because you're in Indiana now, um, but yeah. how long have you been in each one? Uh, I spent around a year in Pittsburgh, um, through a company called UK International Soccer. Um, I worked for them for, worked with alongside them for two years um, as I transferred across into my second year of the degree uh, with the University of South Wales. Um, was there for a year before coming home and then unfortunately didn't get to do my final year out there due to the whole pandemic. And then went out last year, um, did two months in Denver, Colorado, and then went out and did some summer coaching and then moved across to Indiana uh, to work for Indy Premier there. So you initially did the degree with UK International Soccer, and that's the one that is able to take you over to the US, so you earn a degree while also coaching. Uh, it sounds fantastic. Is it as good as it sounds? Uh, for me personally, um, yeah. I loved every second of it, even during the tough times where you're about to finish up your spring training and you're about to go out for summer camps and you're trying to scramble all your social life of working, coaching and everything on top of, on top. And it, uh, for me, I was, it made me grow up a lot. Um, I did the course a little bit later on after transferring from the University of Gloucester and I I loved it. It made me grow up and made me wake up in the morning, do my education and do my work and then have some chill time, get ready, go out coaching and be able to enjoy that coaching and learn from that coaching. Um and then even manage to fit in some extra free time where I managed to go play some uh, pick up games and stuff like that. Yeah, do love a bit of pickup soccer, don't we? So, what was it that when you saw this opportunity, what was it that appealed to you? you think, I want to do that. I want to go to the US. Uh, for me, football. There's, I don't think there's been a period in my life really where football's not been involved in some way. Um, I'm a diehard, funnily enough, a new diehard Newcastle fan I used to travel up there a lot to the games, and I, I've always loved football. I uh, played it. Uh, played it, coached it. And then for me, it was the opp- opportunity. Um, I did, I went out and did um, Camp America in 2016 and went to California and worked in the Redwood Forest as a sports coach. And I originally wanted to go down the, just as a PE teacher. So I did that, enjoyed that, and then came back and then did some kind of like in school kind of like uh, assistance, TA kind of stuff. And I've, I actually found out that was the wrong thing for me. Um, and then when I saw that course and moved across to that course with uh, USW and UKIS, um, it was just like heavenly. I was like, I get paid. I can get a student loan still um, and get some still and still make some money and get an education and my UA for C and B license at the same time. So for me, it was a dream, a dream education, you could say. Mm. And that that looks like a, a brilliant, brilliant opportunity to be able to get that experience, be able to get those qualifications and experience another country as well. It, it it's so much good wrapped in the one. So to to see that this, it makes me jealous. I think a lot of people are a bit older missed out on this kind of thing. But it, for for younger people, it, it sounds brilliant. Now going out there, doing this course, uh, working in different states in the United States. How has it benefited you as a coach? Uh, for me, I, I've, I've learned a lot. Um, 
whether that be the development side of the game. Um, I've learned a lot uh, speaking to coaches that are US based and US citizens to, to UK citizens that have moved out to the US and you can see the uh, the transition between the two and how I'd say a US coach and a UK coach works, especially these the uh, the quote unquote parent coaches. Um, that's a lot of it was kind of training parent coaches to understand the game, and you know everywhere has a different what a different kind of insight and idea. Um, and for me, it was it's always been a way and like. A, a, a fundamental is always just to mean to be to make it enjoyable um and then from making it enjoyable then can we challenge the kids and how can we improve them at the same time and that's something i saw in pittsburgh denver and in and in indy currently um even on summer camps there summer camps i've been all over um i think i've done 30 states out of the 52 wow. uh currently uh, <laughs> due to doing summer camps or just driving through them. And most of those states, it's the same thing. It's just those three things on, on how to improve, really. I want to talk a bit about the infrastructure. So my experience of the US is that the weather changes, but the football doesn't as you go from state to state. Uh, what's your experience of that? What's it like? Uh, are facilities roughly the same? Is the ability kind of the same? What about opportunities and amount of kids playing? Is it? Do you find it to be a homogenous experience from state to state or are there significant differences? Yeah, from what I've seen, it's it's growing a lot. Um, I feel like what the the infrastructure from the top, uh, from the USSF, is really helping. Um, obviously, with a lot of talk as well in regards to the impact uh, – American football and con the, the physical contact that sport has uh, got nowadays. And obviously we've seen, especially the last week uh, with the game that happened on the other day. And a lot of kids are, are moving across to soccer. Um, a lot of clubs that I've been around and people I've spoke to, a lot of their clubs have grown and keep growing due to the amount of kids that want to play soccer. And it's great because... For example, like where I currently am now in Indy, we have kind of two different phases. We have kind of our like casual phase where they can come in and just play with their friends or they can then come and play, as they say, travel or club football. And it's really fun. It's really interesting. Um, and it, and it's, it's a growing sport. And it's, it seems to me that Pittsburgh, Indy and Denver all have got those so looking at those three places individually, what were some of the best things about living in each one? Uh, cool. Wait, we'll, well, we'll start with Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh, I was there with about 10 other coaches, um, all obviously with UK International. Um, we had, I had a couple in the same year as me, a couple first years and a couple of third years and it was great. It's like a, it's like having a, a UK community in a, in another country. Um, Pittsburgh itself, friendly people. Um, as soon as they hear an accent, they they're all over you. They swarm you. Um, beautiful city. Um, and I really enjoyed my time in Pittsburgh. Um, it's a nice, nice place. Great place to go out. Lots of stuff to do there. And um, you've got all the downtown stuff. Then you've obviously got. The ice hockey, the baseball, the American football. Uh, they've got the River Hat, Pittsburgh Riverhounds there for soccer as well. Probably one of the coolest stadiums I've ever been to. Um, it's got uh, two stands, one behind the one goal, one behind the dugouts. And then your view is literally straight over, uh, looking into downtown on the river. And it's, it's beautiful. Denver, for me as well, it's, it's beautiful as well. Lots of stuff to do there as well. Um, Denver, obviously, at your altitude as well. So for me, I went out there just coming off the back of a, a bit of an ankle injury and a problem with my ankle. So it was good for me because I was out there working out and training at altitude and playing football at altitude. And it really helped me get back into fitness and back into shape a little bit, which was nice. Um, beautiful place. The weather there is 
insanely crazy as well. Um, I was there in May uh, last year and I had snow. We had four inches of snow in May there last year. Um, so that was a pretty interesting one. But I think there's a statistic um, for Denver. It's like 300 days a year it has sun. But it could be like as cold as it is in England now, but you'll have sun all day. And it's pretty nice. It's, an, it's not a bad way to to live your life. And in Indy, um, I'm, I'm like north of uh, Indianapolis, um, downtown. Uh, for me, it's a, it's a it's a lovely place. Like, it's it's, not, it's a it's a weird it's a weird it's a lovely area, but it's it's very weird because like you can drive one way and you're like looks like you're driving into like the downtown and stuff like that, and then you can drive the other way or go down and, and take a different exit off the highway, and you can drive through the countryside and see multiple farms and lovely houses and stuff like that. But it's the lifestyle for me in all of them has been amazing. There's always stuff to do stuff to see um like i've never been to a basketball game so my aim when i return next week is to try and get to a basketball game and do that in my free time what other kind of things are you able to do in your free time uh it all it, it all depends what you get on to like what you like uh in 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 uh, Pittsburgh, I uh, spent a lot of time. We used to spend a lot of our free time uh, throughout the weekend. We used to go play pickup soccer. Um, go obviously with the UK international uh, stuff and the USW stuff. We used to meet up and go to Starbucks, Panera Bread, have food and some tea and coffee, and do some work. Um, if you like going out, if you're into that kind of thing. Is you can normally go out and have some good fun and go to some nice bars and stuff. Um, there's there's some so many things you can do um, throughout. Really, I've seen it with like for example, it was a summer camp 2019. Um, we were in northern Alabama somewhere. I cannot remember exactly where, but we just finished up a camp. It was my birthday actually on the Friday and. Uh, we actually on the the following day it was only about a two and a half hour three hour drive to Jet Daniels uh, whiskey and we went for a tour of Jet Daniels uh, facility and stuff like that and it's you get to see a lot of interesting stuff like if you if you like your history stuff like that um, I spent a couple of weeks this year uh, in the summer doing some camps uh, in just off the coast of Portland Maine. On very very small islands, uh, one called Long Island, one called Chibig Island. Um, Chibig Island is, I think, they only build two grants, two houses a year to be built there, due to how small the island is. It's about five miles long, about three miles wide. Uh, you don't need a car to get around. You can ride a bicycle everywhere. Um, we stayed there at the. Uh, funny enough, it was my birthday that week as well. Um, we stayed at a youth hostel there uh, on the island that only opens for the pretty much in the summer for when they have all the kind of like summer housing people come across to the islands, and like it was great fun. Like play, went to the gym, then walked, went to the gym in the morning. Would go shower, get ready, go through the back door across to the field where we would coach for the morning. Then would go back, go sit by the pool or get on a bicycle because we got gave some bicycles to go ride ride around go find a, a which beach we wanted to go to today and go sit on a beach and yeah it's not um there's so much you can ex you can explore and do pretty much um especially for the host host family kind of experience um i've seen so many different things through the host family kind of experience that it's insane now having gone to as you said 30 states lived and worked in lots of different locations in the in the u.s how has it benefited you as a person, not just a coach? Um, it makes you, for me, it's made me very open-minded. Um, as much as going out there young and having fun, you've always got to be mature and responsible as well. Um, making sure that you go out, you enjoy yourself, but you've also got to remember you're in a different state. Each different state has different rules on different things. You need to be careful. Um, obviously, being classed as a foreigner over there as well, obviously, you're going to get treated a little bit differently at times. Um, I've seen some good and bad stuff out there, and you always have to kind of keep your 
keep your guard up in a way, but make sure your your guards loose enough at times that you can go out and enjoy yourself at the same time. What are some of the challenges that you've found living in the US? Um, you could a lot of what the one of the big ones I I've, I've seen and I've I've had myself is like is is being homesick at times. Um, like I'm I'm I have a very small family, but I'm very close to my mum and dad and my nan and granddad. And like for the first couple of weeks out there, I always find it hard to not be around them and not being able to just get in the car, drive drive and go see see them. Um, or go hang out with my my nan and granddad uh, and stuff like that. So that's that's a tough one. I feel, I feel like the homesick, being homesick. Um, obviously, if you don't drive, I, I I feel like that's a big challenge out there as well. Luckily, I I drive, but I was with someone who out there in 2019 who could not drive, and I'd imagine I I don't think I could have done it if I couldn't drive because you get used to driving on the opposite side of the road and all that stuff very quickly. Um, but I feel like it's the U S is that big. You need to, you need to know how to drive to be able to enjoy yourself and to be able to go see stuff. Yeah. Pretty much everywhere in the U S from one or two places like New York city. It's such a car dependent society that people look at you like an alien if they ever see you. Yeah. 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 It's insane. Like we were very lucky in Pittsburgh. The, the host family we stayed with, um, there was a, a train that ran all the way to downtown, all the way to the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers Stadium. So we were very lucky that if we ever wanted to go downtown or we got a couple of tickets that once to go watch the Steelers play, um, we were very lucky that we could get on this train and just sit on the train and take the train all the way down. So that wasn't too, that wasn't bad. Um, but that was very lucky. But even then, like for us to go meet up and go hang out or do something as a group of a couple of us, um, we all at Nice needed needed a car to pick everyone up to go do it. Now, looking specifically at football, because every country does it differently, and of course the Americans like to call it soccer and have lots of other terminology like um, mid-stripe instead of halfway line. Um, loads of things like that. Yeah. What football-wise has taken some adjusting to for you? Um, For me, some of yeah. Just some of the some of the terminology, like for example, we we say bibs, they call them pinnies, um, stuff like that. Like I still do that now, and I've been back and forth from there for a couple of years. I I still go out, and I'll probably do it. I'll probably do it now when I get get back to coaching after uh, in a, in a week's time. I'll probably still go right. Here's a bib for you, and the kids. Sometimes kids look at you, and especially growing up in England and growing up with our kind of what we say and how we say it all like it's it, it is a little different it is like sometimes you have to like stop and like especially like that's how like, the one thing i've learned is like sometimes like they'll say something or an american will say something how they say it and you may need them to be like can you translate that a little bit for me in a way <laughs> because um sometimes it, it can get like crossed crossed a little bit so sometimes you need it but it's not it's mostly very it's mostly common sense but sometimes like they'll have like this crazy idea on something that, or, or on something and it'll just be oh what switching the play um so you can have that especially with like the parent coaches you can sometimes have them say something crazy and just be oh yeah that's just switching the play or something like that um so it's it's just mostly common sense really in St. Louis a lot of the kids called it changing the field Right. Yeah, that's what you do if there's a dog turd on the pitch. Right? Yeah, what you mean is the ball's out on the left and you're kicking it across to the right. That's not changing the field. <laughs> yeah, that's or you get yeah stuff like you get little Johnny's mum on the other side of the on the field and she's shouting like Johnny, go play offense. And it's no, it's like no, Johnny, you're you're playing defense this five minutes. Can you can you transition to the halfway? So we they can't play out as hard easily, but can you and stuff like that? And it's just like maybe it's just yeah, it's just learning and trying to make it simple for them. I find I find at times. Mm. Now talk a little bit about what it's like to live there, because in some places you 
uh, with host families and a lot of that obviously depends on the club or the company you work for so what's it been like for you um for me I, i've i've had pretty much a lot of good experiences um i i've had most of them have been through host families uh in pittsburgh i stayed with a host family and had an amazing time there in denver in colorado i had i think i stayed with three different families there because they wanted to kind of uh kind of you they put classes like international coaches so they wanted us to use us for a bit of uh, publicity and kind of get us to interact with a couple of the different age groups i uh, i still speak to all of all three of those families from there um i was speaking to one the other day for new years and like it's you get some amazing amazing experiences like i I got some tickets from what the one family for the MLS um, and went to the, and then the other, and then one of the other families came to the MLS game with me and you get to like hang out, hang out and interact and meet up. Uh, all these kids get to meet and know each other and stuff like that. And it's, it's a great, it's really great. Like, especially like this year has been a lot different to previous. Like when I was there in Pittsburgh, I was to times where you're a bit under pressure or stress because of, you've got coaching, but you've got to finish your assignment or so, so forth. And it can be quite a challenge, challenge at times, but I've noticed with like this year, I've been able to enjoy it a lot more. Um, like I was saying earlier, I'm a massive Newcastle fan. <laughs> One of the uh, families in Denver, they are now diehard Newcastle fans and watch most of the games and text me every update. Well <laughs> So I've got them into the new into Newcastle. They have a sign up on the top of the stairs for St James's Park. Um, uh, I think the boy got actually a, a Newcastle top for Christmas <laughs> um, and stuff like that. And in in Indy, it's the same. I'm staying with a host family. It's meant to only be a, a short term thing where I'm meant to stay there for a, a couple of months till I've built up some money to be able to move out. Um, I I get on with the family really well uh like in like christmas day we were on facetime having a chat and new year's unfortunately we didn't get to have a chat because i was in bed very um, very unwell and and stuff and we've we've done like a, a little christmas presents for each other so i've got them some christmas presents that we'll uh give out to each other when i return next week and they've offered for me to stay for the entirety of my visa um for the 18 months so it's uh yeah you you can build some friends for life like I I definitely know that if I don't stay out after the eighteen months majority of these families I will most likely keep in touch with no matter what or where I am um and especially with the World Cup coming up uh, in a couple of years time and it's going to be out there as well mm. um I'll definitely be trying to get out there to go one watch England play to catch up with some of these people and be able to hang around with them. Now, away from work, away from host families and colleagues, have you found it difficult at all to integrate into society? Um, you yes, yes and no. Um, no in ways, yes in ways. Uh, this year, last year, uh, in, in, in especially in India, it's a little different. Um, coming in as a younger coach, a lot of the coaches within the club there. Are, older married kids um i think we've only got around myself and another coach you are a younger two younger kid younger lads uh we um it's it's a it's a little different like at times it's hard to like getting on with the staff and everything's all good and the parents and the kids that's all that's all good that's all fine but having a, a social life at times has been is, is quite tough because you're you're coming out by yourself uh so sometimes it can be quite tough to interact with some some people and stuff like that. But I I just try and focus on work really. Um, I set myself goals, um, and I I just want to try and achieve them as quick as possible and enjoy the process really. So uh, for me, I if I make friends along the way, it's amazing. But for me, I. I have a small group of friends that I still speak to, uh, some in the UK, some in America, all over America, and a couple of, in Asia as well. And I speak to them 
and then hopefully you can get one or two friends locally um it helps in 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 indy where uh we we have a couple of uk coaches we have about 10 of us that are from the uk um we do a bit of a a uk kind of only kind of group so we meet up uh once a month and go out for a couple of drinks and some food normally for an indian and talk anything uk pretty much it's no us talk that night <laughs> so that kind of helps and stuff like that so it's not too bad like indy the, the guys at indy are great and obviously being with a host family um i got two boys that live with me uh that i live with and they're uh it's great because they're always keeping you on your feet asking you like how can i help do with this or playing them on fifa and stuff like that so it's it's it yes and no to that it's hard it's hard and it's not hard in ways one of my favorite memories of working in the us was destroying all the kids on fifa i haven't yeah. played regularly for years as, as an adult i just don't have as much time as i'd like to be able to sit down on the xbox but then you play against these kids who are so used to ultimate team and doing these trick moves and I would pass the ball around them like cones and they would act like it was like I'd done some kind of hack or, or cheat code. <laughs> no, you, you just you're yeah. doing everything that I tell you not to do when you play real football. That's yeah. why I'm able to pass you around the ball, pass around you one touch. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's um we've we've definitely had that a couple of times. Um the the family I say we have we 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 have very competitive FIFA competitions. Uh, especially me and the dad, he he's a he's a big me and him are very big gamers. So <laughs> our competitions are very very fun. Um, we have a good we have a good laugh against it and stuff like that. And like like uh, the boys are uh, the boys that in the house they uh what they get they work from like they do school from home on a Monday and a Friday. So it's it's good fun because like if they finish all their work like on a Friday and they finish up some of their homework or their homework for that day. Um, we sometimes, we then go out and go to the mall and go get ice cream or get a ball, get boots and go to the nearest field and have a kick around and stuff like that. So there's always ways to keep you entertained um, and stuff like that. And and either, either the way I look at it is no matter what it is, it's always a, it's always a story or a memory that I'm going to be able to pass on to someone else so final question then what advice would you give to someone who is considering working in the US um for me if it's something you want to do it's it's uh it's growing here massively for me I would say just be prepared um enjoy it make friends have fun, experience different cultures, um, experience some amazing food as well. I must say there's some unbelievable restaurants and places you can eat in America. Um, and just, just to enjoy it, work hard. Um, if you work hard, you will get far, um, no matter who you're with, where you are. Um, so that would be it for me, really. Harry, thank you very, very much for your time to come back to the podcast. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed listening to another episode and learning more about the football world. If you'd like to share your adventures with us, reach out. We'd love to have you on. See you next time.